So I absolutely love this particular conversation that kicked off with some of the audience members saying, you know, that on the hardware for the PlayStation 5 and Series X, you can actually get more out of your game in terms of memory prioritization and some other stuff. However, I think the missing part is, even though PC doesn't function like the console, developers have always learned how to actually ensure that they make up for the complexity that is a PC, running different processes, and you know it's optimized for bigger and wide variety of workloads simultaneously. And this is evident by the fact that we have a lot of good games. Now, some people came out and they decided that they were going to turn the conversation into a PlayStation 5 is the best place to play your games because of bad PC ports, in quote. To that, I responded and said, you do know that usually the biggest thing that actually makes that really fun is the developers don't finish their games. And the one big piece of evidence is patch notes. In fact, I think there are games that have gotten way more patch notes than games have been released in the entire year 2024. One of such, and that's an exaggeration, is Dragon's Dogma 2. I bought this game at launch. I fired up my 4090, almost could not get a consistent 60 FPS. Many people couldn't. The game was just not optimized in terms of its performance before launch. Capcom decided to put it out there because for some strange reason, they don't necessarily care too much about optimizing the game. I wish they had just locked it on 30 FPS across the board, but they decided to leave the FPS open, which kind of gave room for all kinds of you know weird stuff. But at the end of the day, they finally come out with a more recent patch note to show us that the game is now performing at specific render resolutions and frame rates on these next gen consoles. So for the platform PS5, they prioritize 2160p to 1728 and you can get about 50 to 60 FPS. On Xbox Series X, you're going to see that the resolution also and the scaling is about the same with the PlayStation 5 and Series X. The Series S is going for even lower uh, you know, performance as well. Its resolution trying to stay somewhere close, maybe a little lower at the end of the day. So what does this say? This says that the PS5 and the Series X were basically victims of a developer not completing their game. Nowhere are you going to hear me say that this is because it's actually the platform or the console itself anymore. I used to actually think that before. That was actually a position I held at one point, but then after you know engaging more in learning about game development, I realized that there are just some games that would do this based on the way they were developed. However, with more time put into those games with changes being made on multiple systems, you can actually get the game to run at whatever performance you choose to target. The challenge, though, is a lot of artistic, you know, integrity and fidelity will have to be sacrificed, seen as there are different hardware specs. And a lot of these hardware specs, especially on the consoles, are not strong or, in a sense, you know, capable of being updated or upgraded. It's just a lockdown ecosystem. This can be an advantage. But at the same time, also, it could be a disadvantage if the developer is limited in how they basically get things going. Now, from the money perspective, I think this is also one thing that we need to pretty much talk about and ensure that we get this whole thing right. Because I feel like some people are trying to come into, you know, and I know, and I've said this before, I know gamers, we are proud of the platforms that we play on. We enjoy playing games on them. However, it's nice to not take away the responsibility from the developers and try to throw it at some other hardware that is a standardized device. If you look at the PC side, it just says varies dependent on hardware and settings. Now, what that means is we PC players, we're going to have to go figure out how to actually maintain 60 FPS, possibly by using the console like performance in quotes, which is basically the developers mapping out to say, these are the best settings that's going to give you the very best on low end hardware if you have higher end PC hardware. And so that's pretty much how it's always gone. And in my other videos, I did point out Dragon's Dogma 2 as one of the games. I pointed out Mortal Kombat 1 and so on and so forth. This made the audience member get upset and say, you know, get, you know, take your PC knowledge or something weird like that. And I was looking, thinking to myself, why are people not open to the possibility of actually, you know, getting rid of their prior beliefs if their beliefs are, you know, found to be not accurate or not lining up with what reality is? And I think in this console conversation, now that, you know, the consoles are pushing closer and closer to PC, a lot of folk are not too uh, used to, I guess I'll put it that way. They're not really used to 
the reality where a lot of their thoughts and a lot of their ideas are severely challenged by, you know, the heavy hitting nature of how PC, you know, component evaluation and even technology evaluation is done. You know, you living in a, or being in a closed ecosystem, it's easy to just say, well, this is the ecosystem I'm in and these are all the requirements within that ecosystem. But once you, you know, venture outside, you know, it's a really, uh, it's a really brutal world out there. I, I mean, I've said this before, especially when you see a lot of talking heads from the console side, they go buy a big, you know, PC and then they now think, oh my goodness, I'm now a, a technology expert in a sense. And then I look at them and say, well, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it in terms of learning how these things work. And to be very honest, I myself, I'm learning as well. But I think it really goes to show that there really needs to be, in my opinion, a sense of humility when we actually come to the table to actually have these conversations. I'm not, you know, mocking Capcom that they didn't get their game out, you know, in the most performant way. I'm just, you know, pointing out that for anybody who may have thought that this is because you know, uh, the, the ecosystem, the, the console ecosystem is better because, you know, you have a locked ecosystem and developers can optimize for it. It's just all about time and resources. And in some cases, some studios don't have the time and resources, or at least they claim not to. And they decide that they want to go for sales first, which I think sales really did suffer. Uh, this game would have sold a lot more. I think this game would have probably, you know, pushed into the 10 million in terms of sales if the performance was actually good. Because, you know, expecting people to pay $60 for your game and the game not performing well is not good. Even in the case of Gotham Knights, when that happened too, console to PC, both of them were actually lacking in performance. I mean, if they wanted to lock it to 30 FPS, at least they should have done a fine job locking the game to 30 FPS. A lot of people will, will play your game at 30 FPS, but 30 FPS was not even guaranteed. It was dropping frames at the end of the day. Anyways, I just wanted to point that out. I really do appreciate the conversations going on. Um, hopefully, we can keep open minds and just know that this technology stuff is quite interesting and uh yeah let me hear your thoughts in the comment section thanks so much for watching and i think i'll probably maybe take some time to test out my copy on uh you know different pc settings yeah i don't know such <laughs> such a very interesting you know proposition I i'm just stuck in a loop playing specific games i think i was playing mortal kombat this uh, week so far it's been a lot of fun all right talk to me in the comment section like i said i appreciate you all so much peace out